Millions of Americans are willing to travel to see the total eclipse. Yeah, we're going to introduce you to one man who takes it really to a whole new level, the eclipse chaser, when we come back. The Now Detroit returns in just a moment. Taking action for you from 7 Action News, this is the Now Detroit. Let's catch you up on the Now News feed. Representatives from the U.S., Mexico and Canada began five days of meetings today to renegotiate NAFTA. That's the North American Free Trade Agreement. President Trump blames NAFTA for jobs being eliminated here in America. Crews are working to save the Mariposa Grove of giant sequoias from a wildfire that's burning in Yosemite National Park. The fire started Sunday. It's burned more than 1,700 acres so far, and it is 0% contained. And today is the 40th anniversary of the death of Elvis Presley. Tens of thousands of people are in Graceland for a special vigil today, which is part of a week-long tribute. Some are upset because this year they have to pay $29 to take part. Coming up, the Now's Simon Chowdhury takes us to a local store that celebrates Elvis. We can't wait to show you her story. Well, more now on the countdown to the solar eclipse. While many of you are getting ready to experience it for the first time on Monday, for one man, it's becoming routine. Yeah, that doesn't make it, though, any less special. In fact, just the opposite, in fact. The Nows Kamasi Aaron introduces us to the eclipse chaser. This is a newspaper from Aruba. David Barron can still remember watching the total eclipse on the sands of Aruba. So I went down there, not sure what I would experience, and it just changed my life. On a rooftop in Germany. That's Munich during the total eclipse. <laughs> Looks like nighttime, but that was the middle of the afternoon. There was just this enormous cry of joy that lifted up from the city. In Australia, in the Faroe Islands, 
and in Indonesia. Sort of like a woven circle with uh, fibers coming off, shimmering, almost like tinsel. While many people are fortunate to see this rare natural wonder once in their lives, it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in the sky. David has experienced it five times over. Oh, what I've come to, to, to realize is that no two total solar eclipses are the same. I mean, this is what it's going to be like in the U.S. David's quest to see as many total solar eclipses as possible started after a chance conversation with an astronomer more than 20 years ago. And he said to me, before you die, you owe it to yourself to experience a total solar eclipse. And that got my attention. These are things to remind me uh, of the places I've gone to see them. Now he's got quite the collection of eclipse memorabilia. These are the eclipse stamps that the U.S. government just issued uh, for the eclipse this year. This is me again looking at the sky. I'm glad I've got these pictures, but I generally, I mean, I don't take pictures during the total eclipses because I want to experience every precious second. A total solar eclipse literally lasts seconds, about 150. Long enough, David says, to change his outlook on life. It connects you to the universe in a way that I think is unlike anything else. And it reminds you that we are these tiny little beings on this very small piece of rock floating out in the middle of nothing. And I glanced upward and I was just Dumbstruck. Now, David shares his total eclipse excitement with the masses through this TED Talk and his new book. You can look up at the sun. Preparing to witness total eclipse number six and giving the same advice given to him so many years ago. Before you die, you owe it to yourself to experience a total solar eclipse. It is that awe-inspiring. For the now, I'm Kamasi Aaron. Wow, maybe a lot of people will join him. Be sure to head over to WXYZ.com for a list of everything you need to know about the eclipse. We posted several pages that outline the NASA coverage as well as how to safely watch the eclipse, which is so important. Very Joanne. important, mm -hmm. Carolyn. Mayor Duggan announced a citywide effort to reduce infant mortality in the city of Detroit. The program now includes the partnership of Sister Friends Detroit and Make Your Date Detroit. It combines world-class medical resources with community-based support. It will connect expectant moms to vital resources, education classes, collaborative care coordination for expectant moms, and more. All moms in Detroit, or in the metro Detroit area, you know, you need to sign up because you never know if you are going to go into preterm labor. And the educational classes that you're going to get, you know, getting a cervical lifting done, it's almost like a weather forecast to let you know what's going on with your body. So far, officials say more than 5,000 mothers have already signed up. All right, if you get angry, it can make you happier in the long run. Well, that's at least what a new study says. So we want to know how this all pans out. So we're asking Dr. Partha Nandy. Hi, Dr. Nandy. Hi, Carolyn. How are you? Uh, great. Hopefully you are as well. So how does anger help with uh, our happiness? You know, I'd love to say, Carolyn, that you can be happy all the time and avoid angry feelings, but we're human. We experience a range of emotions that go kind of hand in hand with the ups and downs of life. So to see how emotions like anger, hostility, and hatred impacted happiness levels, researchers interviewed 2,000 students in eight countries, including here in the U.S., and they found students who said their emotional state really matched what they wanted or desired, reported greater life satisfaction and fewer symptoms of depression. So pretty interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Can you give us an example of how this really works? Absolutely. So let's say, for example, you're hoping to get a promotion at work. You would expect to feel pretty crummy if that doesn't happen. Or if you read a bad story about child abuse, you would expect to feel anger. Instead of burying that emotion, allow yourself to feel it. It's better to process unpleasant emotions because they could be meaningful and valuable feelings that in the end lead to more life satisfaction. When my pa father passed away, I could have just ignored it and try to move on, but I, but I led myself to say, you know, I'm going to feel that sadness allowed me to grow. Yeah, I certainly understand that sometimes we feel better after a good long cry. So, so what are your prescriptions in the long run for us and it's to embrace our anger? Yeah, absolutely. The Western world, you know, has a lot of unrealistic expectations and there's a lot more to happiness than just feeling endless joy. So my prescription is number one, don't feel pressure to be happy all the time. Suppressed emotions can actually lead to less happiness when your reality doesn't match your desires. Also, don't push away negative emotions. Instead, find meaning in them. They'll lose their power and they resolve naturally. Also, very important here, exercise regularly. You'll lower your stress chemical levels, which allow you to better cope with unpleasant feelings. And finally, 
think of ways you can safely express your emotions like talking with a loved one. Holding on unpleasant emotions can really lead to a downward spiral, which can make it worse. Wow, that makes a lot of sense always. Yeah, let it out, talk about it, and, and then throw it away. Absolutely. All right, Dr. Nanny, as always, thank you so much for your medical advice. My we pleasure. appreciate you. Joanne? Yeah, great advice. Mm -hmm. All right, imagine paying a flat fee to see as many movies as you want. One company is trying to make that a reality. How it would work and how much you could save at the theater. You are watching the Now Detroit on this Wednesday. So glad to have you with us. Let's get you up on the Now News Feed and a chance to catch our breath when it comes to North Korea after it delayed plans to launch missiles toward Guam. President Trump tweeted today, Kim Jong-un made a very wise and well-reasoned decision. The alternative would have been both catastrophic and unacceptable. We think a landfill's on dry land, but a team of researchers has found a plastic dump larger than Mexico off the coast of South America. The swirling ocean currents have collected tiny plastic particles, even old water bottles, all in one place. And spoiler alert, HBO just accidentally aired the next episode of Game of Thrones four days before it was supposed to. Man, I missed that. This happened in Spain, but with everything that gets posted on the internet, it might as well have been right here, Joanne. That's right. <laughs> all right, big things have been brewing for a Detroit iced tea company I first profiled a few years ago. Some national exposure has helped the owner land some big accounts and that's why we once again say mom's a genius. You've been busy since the last time we met. I have, things have really picked up. With every bottle filled at this Detroit plant, Naila Ellis Brown is fulfilling her dreams. So right here, Alice is filling the bottles and all the herbs have been steeped. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, just like you would do it at home, just in a bigger yeah, kettle. Yeah, much bigger kettle. Yeah. Her hibiscus tea is her great-grandfather's recipe, which explains the name Ellis Island Tea. Ellis, his last name, the island, well, he was born in Jamaica and came to this country through Ellis Island. Three years ago when we visited, Naela was only running one shift a week to meet demand. Because a lot of times I would come in and be in the office doing paperwork yeah. and trying to um, pick up on sales leads and the plant would be like dead. But today, the Detroit plant is running five days a week. We got placed in all of the Kroger's in Michigan, so there is about 150 Kroger stores. And that's not all. Earlier this year, MSNBC chose her for a Your Business Makeover. We got our packaging redesigned. The last time you were here, we had old labels. We got completely fresh new packaging. Well, that helped a lot with the bottle popping on the shelf. It was that makeover she credits with helping to land an account with Sam's Club and an account to be sold at airports. We are going to be distributed through airport concessions all around the country. So we're considered national now. This is our new half gallon bottle that is launched exclusively with Sam's Club. And when we were there... Are you excited? Yep. Me too. She got her first look at the special display boxes that'll be on Sam's Club shelves. You're making it, Mommy. Yes, I'm doing it. <laughs> it's cool. That's her little girl, Aaliyah. Do you have a favorite tea? Which one? Uh, that one. The original sweet tea, of course. During our first interview three years ago, Naila had to briefly stop the interview to wear her mom hat. Today, she's teaching that little one about running your own company. What is entrepreneur, Aaliyah? They own businesses. Yes, they own businesses. You're so smart. It's been a slow brew reaching the success Naila is now seeing, but nine years after she began selling her tea. We are definitely going to close out this year um, with hitting our, our million dollar mark. Whoa, yeah, congratulations, yeah, yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. And so once again, we say, mom's a genius. Sky's the limit. Congratulations to her. The tea comes again in two varieties, the original Jamaican sweet tea and the unsweetened version as well. So she's having great success. And uh, But I want to point out something else. I don't know if you recognize that little girl, Aaliyah, her daughter, but she's kind of a star in her own right these days because of Aaliyah's little argument that she had with her dad over counting to five. It's gone viral with millions <laughs> of views. Take a look at a little snippet of this. No. No, it's not, Aaliyah. It's one, two, three, four, five. No, it's one, one two, three, five. No, sweetie, it's <laughs> one, two, three, four. No. Five. no one, two, three, this goes on, you guys, for a minute until one, mom two, steps three, in. Watch what happens four, then. Five. Here we go. All right, count to four. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> you did it! It was like an epiphany. Yeah. She's like, oh, the number four. That I missed time. it, huh? That little thing will one day be running that company. Uh, you? You're not kidding, yeah. it, right? I'll tell you what, too. They license that video, so you know every view that they get, they get money for oh, that, really? too. Now. So oh, she's okay. kind of like an entrepreneur in her own little yeah, right now. But cool? Great success for that family. Yeah. We're happy for You said for you really like the I do. Tea, so it's a very a unique thing. hibiscus flavor. It's really neat. Neat oh, stuff. So. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, two thumbs up to you. <laughs> Both of you yes, and your whole right. family, really. So how would you like to pay about 10 bucks a month to see up to 365 movies a year at oh. the theater? Sounds good, right? Yeah, pretty good deal. Not everyone's on board, though, and you guessed it. There is a catch here. This is something that uh, has been put out there. It's called Movie Pass. It has a new investor. It's yes. an analytics company that collects data on people. It's lowering its subscription rate to $9.95 a month. That gets you into 91% of theaters across the country with no blackout dates. And it includes the big chains, AMC, Regal, and Cinemark. Seems like a great deal since the average price of just one movie ticket is about $8.89. The company says it's like when Netflix and Redbox first launched and will shake up the movie industry. The trade-off is how much personal information you may have to share as the company tracks your viewing habits. Yeah, that's right. For its part, AMC says that it isn't liking the idea. It's considering legal action. They say they're not opposed to subscription programs, but says the new movie pass business model just isn't viable. AMC says it will undercut its ability to operate quality theaters, isn't an incentive for filmmakers to make great movies, and in the end, movie moviegoers will be left disappointed if and when it fails, Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one, $10 for 360 
see if I move as well. Mm -hmm. All right, 40 years ago today, the world lost a legend. Elvis Presley may be gone, but devoted fans continue to honor him. That's right, that includes a party store owner in White Lake. The now Detroit Simon Chaudhry shows us why the owner of Graceland Wine Shop loves Elvis. Hey, babies, we're hanging out at a place where the king never dies. It's all about Elvis in here. This is Graceland in Michigan, where time has stopped and Elvis lives forever. Here we celebrate him every day. Dave Chirac owns Graceland Wine Shop in White Lake. He can't help falling in love with this icon. Dave has been a fan of the King since he came to this country at the age of 16. Dave listened to his music to help him with his English. Welcome to my world. And uh, when I listened to it, I'm like, what a great voice. And uh, that was my obsession. Dave religiously buys Elvis memorabilia. Who is this guy, Jesus? I'm like, he's close. <laughs> he's not Jesus, but he's close. He has so much stuff, he can't fit it all in the store. I ran out of room. Uh, the only way is I, I have to go to the ceiling almost. <laughs> That's Elvis safe. Thank you very much. How much money are you spending on this guy? About $40,000, and it all started with this. That's my favorite picture. It's all about the king. From the food he sells. We have the Graceland Heartstopper. We have our number one is the King Euro. To his customers, no matter the age. He came in and had the glasses on and he loves Elvis. To his son, who he almost named Elvis. But my wife's like, no, I just can't have that. And if you come to Graceland, just don't be cruel if you're not a fan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I guess it's safe to say Elvis has not left this building. In Graceland, I mean White Lake, Simon Chowdhury for the Now Detroit. Isn't it amazing? All these years later, people still love Elvis. Can't no get matter what, can't, 40 years later, huh? It really is incredible. Mm -hmm. All right, Denise, are you an Elvis fan, my friend? I am an Elvis fan, but a different kind of person because I'm talking about my cat. <laughs> <laughs> I love my... <laughs> I, I, I celebrate Elvis pretty much every day. You know, we have conversations. I give him good food and he certainly loves me. At least I hope so because I love him. <laughs> but overall, today is a great day. I know Elvis is outside enjoying this beautiful weather because we do have temperatures anywhere between 79 to 84 degrees. Adrian is really the warm spot at 86 with that southeasterly flow. The wind anywhere between 5, closer to 15 miles per hour. Bad Axe is reporting 12 miles per hour. But right now, our now radar showing mostly sunny conditions, no rain. But once again, that is expected to change tomorrow as we are tracking a warm front that will continue to approach our area and increase the chances for rain, storms, and even the possibility for severe weather. So here's the risk for tomorrow. We are on a slight risk, which means that some of these storms could be strong to severe and some of these cells could actually pack damaging wind up to 60 miles per hour. Frequent lightning, not out of the question, brief heavy downpours as well, and that could lead to localized flooding. So here are fast numbers. Tornadoes, uh, not out of the question either, is that one is the lowest risk, but there is a chance of a quick spin up. Wind, lightning and flooding all at three, and there's even a chance for some small hail. So here's our four day forecast. Tomorrow, 70% chance for showers, so showers and storms are likely. 85 degrees will be the high on Friday. We're looking at 81 degrees with still a 20% chance for showers Friday. We're not expecting any severe weather, but it'll be mostly cloudy and just spotty sprinkles here or there. By Saturday, dream cruise day, a lot of people trying to bring their nice cars out. Well, we're still looking at mostly cloudy skies and the chance for some very uh, light rain as well, but it is a 20% and we'll keep looking at our forecast for that day. It will be cooler, 79, and by Sunday, the sunshine is back out. 84 degrees will be the high. So overall, for the next three days, make sure you do have your umbrella or your poncho with you because you may need it. So now I'm back here at the Spirit Park with my girls. So Dave, being that I'm hanging out here, I think you'll have to work the weather for the seven. So Carolyn and Joanne, make sure you let Dave know uh, my plan. <laughs> we'll, we'll pass it along. I can't blame you, Denise. Yeah, you hang out and have some fun. We'll tell him he has to work hard for you. Exactly. Hi right. to all the ladies. We will. All right. Bye. All right. Coming up next on The Now, summer is wrapping up and the kids are headed back to school. Uh, for these adults, that means it's time to play a new adventure that's selling out across the country. Glenda.
Good afternoon, Joanne and Carolyn, and here are the big stories we're working on for Action News at 5. A woman missing for over a month found alive what she told police she had to do in order to survive. And a woman who spends her time giving to those in need. Well, now she needs some help of her own after a serious car accident. How she's calling upon the community to lend her a hand. It's all minutes away on 7 Action News at 5. We hope to see you then. Welcome back. Let's check our Now News Feed. Today, President Trump is signing the GI Forever Bill. It gets rid of the 15-year limit on veterans to use their education benefits. We may finally learn what happened to Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. Investigators have reanalyzed satellite photos taken shortly after the plane disappeared three years ago. They show dozens of objects drifting in the ocean where they think the plane may have crashed, but they're not yet sure if it's debris or something else. And remember the tweet we told you about yesterday? Yesterday by former President Obama quoting Nelson Mandela after the Charlottesville attack. It's now the most liked tweet in history. It's been liked nearly three and a half million times. Wow. All right, there are hundreds of adults putting away their phones, gathering their friends, and getting away from the stresses of life. But now Zanny Taylor takes us to adult summer camp. Check it out. We are in the mountains of Colorado. This is just one of 16 locations where you can play like a kid, but party like an adult. <laughs> Wait, where is it? Blah. At Camp No Counselors, that's exactly what campers can do. And this camp has an amazing ropes course and climbing wall and zip line. But that's not all. Wow. Nice. One of the most stress-free environments I've been in for a long time. Everything's taken care of for you. All you have to do is turn up to events. Woo. 
Mm. Just like most of the campers, Francis Logren feels the pressure from his job during the Monday through Friday grind. But at camp, the only thing he worries about is maximizing his time to live it up for the weekend. You can't realize just how much fun it is to go in as an adult, get to meet so many interesting people from all over the country who are just here to really have fun and party and to meet people. Fun is the name of the game. All the work that you do being a mature grown up during the week, you can just let that let that go by the side and have a good time. For the most part, this is your quintessential summer camp. Except Dave Kushner, the VP of Community Engagement, says since it's grown-ups only, there's a bit of a twist. Well, uh, the open bar would probably be the big main one. Um, you know, as adults, it's not really, we shouldn't need counselors. We, uh, we don't need anyone to tell us to have a good time or to tell us to clean up after ourselves. Camp No Counselors is only four years old, but word spread so quickly about how fun it was, they now have 16 camps nationwide, including one in Canada. And this is my third Camp No Counselors. Natalie Vincent flew in from Nashville to not only get a taste of the high life in the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> I'm good there. That was... I felt good about that one. But to also reunite with friends she met at last year's camp. There's a core group of, of people that I would have never come across. I would have never met them, and I would have never formed the, the friendships and relationships that I have, and I cherish that the most. It's an opportunity for all of them to escape reality and reconnect with their place of happy again. My best vacation is going out and trying something I've never done before. Okay. For the now, Go. I'm Annie Taylor. This something looks like fun. And that's it for us. Thanks so much for watching the Now Detroit. Joining us again tomorrow at 4. 7 Action News at 5 starts right now. Taking action for you. 7 Action News at 5 starts right now. Crisis in Charlottesville. Lawmakers on both sides slamming the president over recent comments. Today, the president dismantling the Manufacturing Council amid resignations. And the future generation weighs in. Seeing that is kind of sucks and it's, it's disappointing. Why some of them are choosing to ignore what's going on. The big question tonight, can the president recover from all this? We want your opinion. And a mother who helps others in need of help herself. It's our only vehicle, and because Paul uses a power chair, we can't get in any old kind of car. Tonight, she's asking for your help. We begin tonight with more fallout over the president's contentious news conference yesterday. The president reverting back to his Saturday statement saying that both sides were to blame for the deadly weekend violence in Charlottesville. Now politicians on both sides of the aisle are taking the president to task over his comments. We have team coverage tonight from the fallout in Washington. Also, we want to hear from you. We first ask you in the now, do you think the president can recover? from his comments in Charlottesville. We sent out a push alert. You can click on that or log on to our website, wxyz.com slash vote to cast your vote. And we'll give you the real time final results in just a few minutes. But well, for the very latest now, let's go to Janai Norman in our nation's capital. President Trump finding himself on the side of radicals as he seemed to defend white supremacists and neo-Nazis, saying those demonstrating against their views are as much to blame for the violence in Charlottesville as those who planned the event. You had some very bad people in that group, but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Jews will not replace us! Vice News tonight capturing stunning moments in Charlottesville, even as one of the group's members defends the death of counter demonstrator Heather Heyer. The fact that none of our people killed anybody unjustly, I think, is a plus for us. I've condemned neo Nazis. I've condemned many different groups, but not all of those people were neo Nazis, believe me. Republican Lindsey Graham, who once called then primary opponent Donald Trump a race baiting, xenophobic religious bigot, now saying Trump took a step backward by suggesting there is moral equivalency between the white supremacists, neo Nazis, and KKK members and other Charlottesville protesters. I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane. What I'm saying is this you had a group on one side and you had a group on the other, and they came at each other with clubs, and it was vicious, and it was horrible, and it was a horrible thing to watch but there is another side as business leaders began distancing themselves from President Trump he tweeted for every CEO that drops out of the manufacturing council I have many to take their place just one day later eight executives had resigned and the president decided to disband his manufacturing council and one other business council Janae Norman ABC News Washington
Thank you, Janae. And the fallout from Charlottesville has shaken this country to its core, leaving many feeling outraged and hopeless. Well, tonight we're going on a mission to restore that hope through the eyes of those who have the power, conviction and energy to bring change. We're talking about young people. 7 Action News reporter Naya Harden joins us live from Wayne State in Midtown. And Naya, you've been talking to students there all day about the future of this country. What are they telling you? Glenda, a lot of them feel like the leadership has failed them. Some of them say they refuse to get caught up in all this mess. That's why I don't even like, try not to even like, even though it's important to know what's going on, I try not to even like get too involved in it because it's just like so ridiculous. Maria is talking about the recent protest in Charlottesville that left one woman dead and many injured. She says she has decided to ignore all the negativity. Most of the students we tried talking to on campus have been doing the same thing. It's really nothing new. It's just there's something that unfortunately that people tell us that we have to deal with, but those people are the people who are part of the problem just as much as the white supremacists are. Students say President Trump has not made the situation any better. I'm not really that surprised well, yeah, that, that, surprising. <laughs> that he you know, didn't address it immediately or anything uh, or didn't seem to care that much about it. Is anybody surprised at any remarks that he makes anymore? I mean, clearly we don't matter to him. Seeing that is kind of sucks and it, it's, it's disappointing. We know what it is from the history that every race, every tribe come together from every part of the world to make this country great. It's up to us to do something about it. That's like, honestly, the only thing that can be said. If we don't do anything, then nothing will be done because our parents are getting older. Our grandparents are either dead or they're getting older. And it's really up to us. We're the driving force now. We just need to do the right thing and uh, make sure, as a president, bring the country together. I really think that people need to just... Uh unify. Um, yeah, we're like all more alike than we are different, something like that people don't realize that. Yeah. Now students say they are working together. They have been talking to each other. They say they've even had some rallies earlier this year against hate, but they say it's going to be a long fight. Naya Harden, 7 Action News. Uh, Naya, thank you so very much. The young people speak. Now, the reaction to what happened in Charlottesville and to President Trump's comments continues to pour in from everywhere. Today, we heard from the victim's family at a memorial service for their daughter, Heather Heyer, of course, the family struggling to hold back tears as they encouraged everyone to take action. Child's famous Facebook post was, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. She paid attention. She made a lot of us pay attention. Their 32-year-old daughter run down and killed, allegedly by a white supremacist during last weekend's violence at that Unite the Right rally in Charles, uh, Charlottesville. Now on Saturday, after her death, President Trump first blaming many sides, the word he used, for the violence. On Monday, in a scripted statement, he called racism evil. Then yesterday, an energized and feisty Trump was back to blaming both sides for this. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Today, the president tweeting about Heather Heyer, calling her a truly special young woman. We have a look now at more Confederate statues taken down as a response to that violence in Virginia. In the middle of the night, crews took away statues of Confederate General Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson. The Baltimore City Council voted unanimously yesterday to remove four symbols of its Confederate monuments. The mayor of Baltimore saying the statues could be moved to Confederate cemeteries that are not on Baltimore government property. The governor of Maryland also promising to remove the statue of Roger B. Taney from the State House. He was a Supreme Court justice who wrote a decision upholding slavery. And here's what former presidents George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush had to say. America must always reject racial bigotry, anti-Semitism, and hatred in all forms. The 41st and 43rd president released the joint statement to ABC News earlier today. The Bushes are the only former living presidents who are Republican. So at the top of the show, we did ask you to weigh in on whether you think the president can recover from his comments on Charlottesville. The polls are now closed, but let's take a look at the final results. We see that 54% of you believe that he cannot recover and 46% of you believe that he can recover. It is a slight margin there on the half and half. We do thank you for taking the time to share your opinion with us. Former President Obama also reacting to the tension sparked by the violence. Take a look at what he had to say on Twitter. 
The president quoting Nelson Mandela saying, quote, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. That tweet, by the way, from the former president has now become the most liked tweet in history. We are going to move on now to a health alert in Oakland County. Eight new cases of hepatitis A have now been reported in the past week. 7 Action News reporter Dave Llewellyn live in the newsroom with more on these cases and the steps that should be taken really by all of us, Dave. Yeah, Glenda, these cases of hepatitis A should serve as a reminder to all of us about protecting ourselves through good habits. Dr. Partha Nandy is here with his recommendations and uh, the Oakland County Health Division saying that uh, certainly anyone who handles food uh, and uh, also health care providers should uh, have the vaccination. Absolutely. Uh, but they're recommending that it would be a wise thing for all of us to have that uh, vaccination as well. I think what they're trying to do is just be as cautious as possible. They're saying that if in this environment that there's eight cases, maybe the entire community should be vaccinated. I don't want people to get panicked and run and get vaccinated. I think it's just err, to, to do err on the side of caution. In general, people who are at higher risk should get the, the vaccine. And, and you know, I think that, that they're just trying to be as cautious as they can. Because mo most of us have not had the vaccine. That's probably, exactly right. right. But like someone like me who's a healthcare worker should get it. Okay. All right. Very good. And then as far as symptoms for someone uh, who you know, has come in contact or is beginning to feel sick, uh, potentially from hepatitis A. Yeah, so you look for abdominal pain, yellow jaundice, you get weak and tired, your, your uh, urine color can change as well as your stool color. If you have any of those, see your doctor right away and, and make sure that you uh, err on the side of caution. All right, so this is something that we need to be aware of, eight cases, uh, you know, there more could develop as, as well. And so best to be cautious. Exactly, and then you know, we, the main thing is please wash your hands, take some precautions. Remember it's spread from person to person so we can, we can stop this by just using some common sense and washing hands and, and, and precautions like that. Yeah, very good, Dr. Nandy, thank welcome. you very much. We're live in the newsroom, we'll send it back to you. All right, Dave, thanks so much. And thank you, Dr. Nandy. It is a gorgeous summer day out there. Let's look live outside. This is Mount Clemens oh, and the water is beautiful. It's a beautiful August day out there, but there's always something bad happens after no, you say no, that, right? Most of the week it hasn't been the comma. Right, 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 right. But here we are today. Wait, but here we are There's today. more. Yes, there's <laughs> The small print is always an important thing. Let me show you what's going on around the area. So far, we're in good shape. Uh, temperature is 83 degrees outside right now. You can see we're on the toasty side. Cleveland 85, 87 in Fort Wayne, also down in Indianapolis and Chicago. But Chicago, that's the first line of storms that's getting closer to us. It's the leading edge, which is the warm front. Now, this will get near us by tomorrow morning and bring us the first chance of rain, maybe some rumbles of thunder as well. And then tomorrow we'll be in the warm sector where see how it's got watches and warnings down there in Kansas City. And that's probably going to be around here tomorrow. So periods of storms coming, not this evening. You're fine. Temperatures will stay in the 70s for the most part after we drop down out of the 80s. Humidity not bad now, but tomorrow, oh, we're going to go steamy and sticky and all that good stuff. We'll talk about when the storms get out of here, what the greatest threats are coming up in just a bit. All right, thank you, Dave. Now for the latest on the search for five crew members on board an Army helicopter that crashed in Hawaii. We've just learned parts of the fuselage and a helmet have been found about two miles off the island of Oahu. Officials say the Black Hawk chopper went down during a training exercise late last night. Multiple rescue boats and planes are still searching for those five crew members. A pregnant woman suspected of killing her mother pleaded not guilty in court today. Police say Sunday night they were called to a home near Seven Mile and Apolline on Detroit's west side. They found the mother had been stabbed. She was taken to the hospital but died from a heart attack. Police say the daughter suffers from bipolar disorder. That suspect set to appear in court again next week. And Shelby Township police searching for the man who held up a marathon gas station. This happened shortly after midnight. The suspect had a gun, took some money, then took off. Police say he was wearing a black ski mask, black shirt, and blue jeans. A police canine unit failed to track him down, so if you know who he is or where he is or have any information about this crime, call Shelby Township Police. A teen missing for more than a year found brutally murdered. Today, these teens charged in his death. They were in court. Still ahead, disturbing new details about what happened. Plus, they've been in the U.S. for 20 years. Now this couple could be deported tonight. Still ahead, their last-ditch effort to stay in this country.
and a mother who helps others now in need of help herself. Coming up next, the accident that caused her to lose the vehicle she depends on and why she's asking for your help tonight. Only on seven, an Ypsilanti mother left struggling after the vehicle she depends on to care for her handicapped son gets totaled in a serious car accident. It's also leaving her without the resources to help others in need besides her son. Seven Action News reporter Amira David has her story. Well, it's a pretty important vehicle, not only for getting her son to the doctor's office, but also for what she does in here, packing hundreds of bags like this one with food and distributing them to those in need. I was very scared. I didn't know if she was going to make it. It's a son left emotional, but relieved that his mother is still here. Just over a month ago, Kim Hoppy got caught in a terrible accident that almost claimed her right foot. Young lady hit my full size E-150 at 90 plus miles an hour. Because of that, I spent two days in the hospital with a shattered ankle. That ankle luckily saved by doctors, but the vehicle she was in, a 1998 retrofitted van, couldn't be salvaged leaving her temporarily handicapped and unable to properly care for her disabled son. It's our only vehicle, and because Paul uses a power chair, we can't get in any old kind of car. With spina bifida, Paul has come to depend on the vehicle to get to doctor's appointments. But it goes even further than that. Hoppy telling us she relies on that car to distribute hundreds of food packages weekly to students in need. I'm the number one backup person, so I'm the person that delivers and picks up these backpacks. She says she needs the van as the new school year begins, but estimates on a new barrier free and handicapped accessible van are at $40,000. They're just so specialized that 
I can't just run to my local dealership and say, hey, have you got a lift van? But despite the challenges financially, Paul says he's choosing to remain positive. Well, get a vehicle again. You have to be optimistic. And of course, the family is on the hunt for a new handicapped accessible vehicle. If you have one that you can donate, make sure to reach out to me. You can send me an email. In the meantime, they also have a GoFundMe page set up. We're going to post the details of that on WXYZ.com. For now, reporting in Ypsilanti, Amira Davis, 7 Action News. Thank you, Amira. That story came th uh, through our tip line there. And if you have any tips you'd like to send us and see if we can get them on TV for you, just call the number on your screen. 248-827-9252 or email to that tips at WXYZ.com. Well, today marks the 30th anniversary of the crash of Flight 255 in Romulus. 156 people were killed and there was one survivor when that flight crashed just after takeoff. It happened at an I-94 overpass on Middle Belt Road that was near Detroit Metro Airport. You see footage of firefighters using Channel 7 lighting equipment to search that wreckage when they found the lone survivor, a four-year-old girl named Cecilia. Tonight, a gathering expected to take place to mark the occasion and remember the dead. The 30th anniversary ceremony is expected to begin around 845 at the memorial site. Now, this sounds just a little unlikely here, but a tortoise has escaped. Now, the owner needs your help to find him. <laughs> Take a look at this picture. It's an African spurred tortoise, just like this one. Matter of fact, that's him right there. He got loose this morning near the Marwood Manor uh, nursing home in Port Huron. The owner says the creature weighs about 35 pounds and does not bite. We don't expect it's made it very far. If you find him, please contact us here at Channel 7 and we'll put you in touch. What's his name? With the owner. We know his name. Um, toy Toy? I don't know if he answers to it anyway. I'm looking here, but I don't see any information. Run, Tortoise, run! <laughs> Beautiful shot. I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure looking, it's the only yeah. one out there. Mm. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Probably right. Hey, uh, we'll get some storms out right. there, I think, starting tomorrow in the morning. Then another batch possible in the afternoon. Maybe a third batch in the evening. So, uh, lots going on. This is the system I showed you at the top of the show. And it's between the two fronts where things are really active. We'll get into that tomorrow in the afternoon. But this leading edge is out ahead of this warm front. And that's getting closer to us. However, it looks like it's going to kind of swing through Chicago and follow the lake up more uh, north, northeast-ish than east-ish. So, it uh, looks like we'll be fine this evening and most of the night. Some of that could catch up to us toward tomorrow morning. That would be round number one. So we'll talk about periods of storms. Some in the morning, probably not a real big deal there, but in the afternoon and evening could get a bit more organized, could be a problem. So there's a slight risk for severe weather, damaging wind, the greatest threat of all. Uh, some heavy rain is a possibility as well. So let's talk about these fast numbers. First alert storm threats on a scale from zero to five. Just because we put a one on tornado doesn't mean you focus on that. I'm just telling you it's not completely out of the question, especially with the warm front coming through on the north side of town a little bit later in the day. But Damaging wind, uh, frequent lightning, and some flooding rain. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if some spots got two inches out of tomorrow into and through tomorrow evening. Uh, hail's not as big a concern, but it's a possibility as well. So here's 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. Looks pretty active, huh? That starts coming through here. Could have some issues. 730 for the rush hour. And then it looks like it kind of hangs around for a while. There's lunchtime. Then perhaps a little bit of a break here and there. Kind of recharge the atmosphere and get going again. It's 5 o'clock. You can see another round coming in from the west. And this could last well into the evening hours as well. Uh, probably not into the overnight of Friday morning, but we'll keep track of it, of course, the whole time. Winds from the south now at 8, 46% for the humidity. Dew points just starting to come back to 60. It's going to feel really muggy tomorrow from about mid-morning and beyond, and that's when you'll know things kind of getting ripe for the storms. 83 in Detroit, 79 in Mount Clemens, same number in Port Huron. Warmer spot, Adrian, 86, pretty toasty stuff. So 80s this evening, warm sunshine with some clouds here and there. It's no big deal. The evening is fine, not a concern whatsoever. Whatsoever. Uh, tonight down to 67, a little warmer, a little juicier, some clouds increasing toward morning, the first chance of rain, and then again, periods of showers and thunderstorms, some strong tomorrow, possibly severe 85. How about this? We got some numbers for you. We're going to look at noon, 75 on Saturday. There will be a slight chance for a shower or a thunder shower in the afternoon. It's only 20%. Certainly don't change your plans for Saturday. We won't. We will be there. Thank you so much, Dave. Detroit Marines being recognized for their service. Still to come, why one of the nation's first black Marines says this is long overdue. 
A couple recalls to tell you about this afternoon. Some items posing choking hazards to kids and a new partnership for Fiat Chrysler helping to drive that company forward. It's coming up in my Don't Waste Your Money report. Coming up, all new at 6. A trip to the you grocery store. His eyes rolling back. Taking a tragic turn. A toddler choking to death in the middle of the produce aisle. What he ate and the change his parents the night are calling for. Two important recalls and a big step for an American automaker topping our consumer headlines tonight. Let's send it over to Joanne Purton for more on what parents need to be aware of, Joe. Yeah, they've got a yeah. lot to think about here. We're going to begin with a recall of a baby rattle, this Brio Soft Hammer baby rattle. It's been recalled because of a choking hazard. The company says the wooden rings on the hammer rattles can crack, posing a serious threat to children. The toy has a white plastic teething ring at one end and a red, yellow, white and green hammer head at the other. The company says parents should take this toy away immediately. They say you can also contact the company for a full refund. There's also another item your child may have that poses a choking threat. It's a dress this time made by Laura Ashley. It's been recalled. The company says the three pink flower petals you see around the waist can actually detach, posing a choking hazard to kids. The recall involves the Laura Ashley London Girls Floral Clip Dot Dress. Anyone who purchased this dress should contact Pastorelle, it's called, for a full refund. And Fiat Chrysler is joining a team effort to develop a state-of-the-art platform for self-driving vehicles. The company will be joining BMW, Intel, and Mobileye, becoming the first American automaker to join. The self-driving car platform will be designed so auto companies around the world can use it while maintaining their own unique brand identities. 40 autonomous test vehicles may hit the road by the end of this year, and the partners expect to see full production by 2021. I'm Joanne Purton, 7 Action News.
all new at 5.30. They're charged in the murder and mutilation of this team. Today, disturbing new details about how he was killed. There were numerous locations where I located rib bone. Will they go to trial? They've been in the U.S. for 20 years. Now this couple could be deported. Tonight, their last ditch effort to stay in this country. And a disturbing new look at the opioid crisis. Overdose deaths on the rise. The new study just released. And Dr. Nandy answers your Facebook questions. Action for you. 7 Action News at 5.30 starts right now. We have the latest now on a gruesome murder and dismemberment more than a year ago in Macomb County. The case centering around two best friends and a co-defendant who stayed tight-lipped about the case for more than a year. The suspects appeared in court today for a preliminary hearing. 7 Action News reporter Alan Campbell standing by in the studio. And Alan, pretty hard to believe the prime suspect and the victim actually grew up best friends. Yeah, you know, it's hard to believe indeed. Now, 20-year-old Andrew Fiaco was apparently best friends with Stephen McAfee, and today he sat stone-faced throughout the preliminary hearing. The co-defendant in this case, Yvette McDonald, the same. It was determined that Stephen McAfee died as a result of two gunshot wounds to the head. Stephen McAfee had been missing since March 2016. His remains were found more than a year later at two different crime scenes. Today, the Macomb County Chief Medical Examiner, Dr. Daniel Spitz, took the stand, describing what he found on Kuntzman Road in Ray Township. It included various uh, ribs, various uh, vertebrae, um, a mandible, which would be the lower portion of the jaw, um, and several other bones. Items were also found inside clothing at the scene. We found a wallet slash money clip uh, within the pants. Um, that was removed from the left front pocket of the jeans. And within that money clip, there was a Michigan identification card with the name Stephen McAfee. Looked like a driver's license, but it was a, just a Michigan identification card. The body also appearing to have severe trauma from the waist down. There was uh, <clears throat> what I would call a sharp force or chop wound type defects to the bone. Um, just looking at the bones, these were chop 
large scale chop, sharp force wounds. At 34 Mile Road in Van Dyke, detectives also finding more scattered bones and clothing. There were numerous locations where I located rib bones. And also in court today, lawyers pushed Dr. Spitz about the possibility McAfee was shot in self-defense from those two gunshot wounds. Andrew Fianco is facing several charges, including first-degree murder and dismemberment of a body. As for Yvette McDonald, she's charged with being an accessory after the fact, dismemberment of a body, and lying to police. As for the hearing, it is expected to continue tomorrow. In the studio, Alan Campbell, 7 Action News. Sad story all around, Alan. All right, thank you so much. Meantime, Mayor Duggan and officials announced a citywide effort to reduce infant mortality in the city of Detroit. I love the thought of one baby, one child, one healthy birth for every sister friend who signs up. The program includes the partnership of Sister Friends Detroit and Make Your Date Detroit. It combines world-class medical resources with community-based support. It will connect expectant moms to vital resources, education classes, collaborative care coordination for expectant moms, and even more. A couple in California may be deported as soon as today after being in the United States for 20 years. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has the story of a family desperate to stay here and stay together. Emotionally, I'm devastated. A devastating day Maria Mendoza Sanchez says she's known could come since she and her husband Eusebio came to the United States 23 years ago from Mexico illegally with their daughter. Since then, they had three more children, paid taxes, stayed out of legal trouble, and worked Maria as a registered nurse. Factors they thought would help their plea to stay in this country. And they did for a while. The Obama administration allowed them to remain here in California on a year-to-year -year basis. But now, with an in Increase in deportations under the Trump administration. They are now being forced to leave the country tonight. Like cry alone at night thinking about it. Immigration and Customs Enforcement saying in a statement, the courts have consistently held that neither of these individuals has a legal basis to remain in the U.S. While ICE continues to prioritize its enforcement resources to focus on individuals who pose a threat to national security, public safety, and border security, ICE will not exempt classes or categories of removable aliens from potential enforcement. No man, no that enforcement now happening after a failed fight and unanswered pleas to President Trump. He loves his kids very much and his grandchildren too. How will he feel if all in a sudden, you know, his, something will happen to, to let's say, Ivanka? And the couple's three daughters, ages 16, 21, and 23, will stay here in California while they and their 12-year-old son fly to Mexico. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. The Powerball lottery fever heating up once again. The jackpot for tonight's drawing is $430 million. That's the ninth largest in the game's history. So here are some things to keep in mind when you're picking up your ticket. If you pick your own numbers, it's important to stick to that same combination every time you play. And here's another tip. The numbers 8, 54, 14, 39, and 13 are some of the most frequently drawn numbers. But you should also know you may have better odds of winning if you let the computer pick the numbers. 70% of past winners have used quick picks. Tonight's drawing, 1059. Good luck. All right, maybe you've seen them. The classics rolling down Woodward as the drivers all get ready to show off their rides this weekend for the official Woodward Dream Cruise. Now, if you head on out to Woodward tonight, you can get a chance to see about 100 Chevy Bolts, the electric cars, riding along in a so-called silent cruise because they don't make a lot of noise. Those drivers are going to start out tonight at 7.30 from the parking lot at Joe Muir Seafood in Bloomfield Hill. Uh, Bloomfield Hills, right there. 7 Action News and WXYZ.com are the places you want to check for everything involving the Dream Cruise. We'll be covering events all through this week, up and down Woodward, and of course, we invite you to join us Saturday, 7 p.m., for our special Dream Cruise show. We're going to sit down with Henry Ford III and meet the man behind Ford Muscle. Disturbing discovery, human legs found in a trash bin in Rome. Still ahead on 7 Action News, who police now have in custody. Plus, the opioid crisis taking a toll on teens. The new study just out showing an increase in overdose deaths. Up next, Dr. Nandy answering your Facebook questions here. Coming up, all new at 6. 
Neighbors upset as a man hangs a Confederate flag from his Macomb County home. Why this former Army veteran wants to fly his flag and the response just in from the city's mayor. And pipeline problems after having their yard torn up over a year ago. The promises they say were made by the company that remain unfulfilled. It's all coming up next on 7 Action News at 6. Sure hope you join us. A disturbing new look tonight at the opioid crisis among teenagers. For the first time in years, deaths from overdoses are back on the rise. Dr. Parth and Andy joins us right now with a new report just released, and he's answering some of your questions actually right now on a Facebook Live. According to a new report by the National Center for Health Statistics, drug overdose deaths for teens between the ages of 15 and 19 have increased, and the numbers have been down in previous years, but in 2015 they jumped 19%, moving up from 3.1 to 3.7 per 100 thousand teenagers through the death rate. Although the death rate for the males are higher than the females, the number of teenage girls uh, that are overdosing are at its, its highest since 1979. Now researchers reported most of the deaths were actually accidental. What's concerning is that we don't know if this trend will continue. We've been on Facebook Live and we have a couple questions here, right? Yeah, we have a couple questions taken right off Facebook. And so one woman or father says, I'm worried about my son. How can I tell if they're, he's doing the drug? And so it's an important question, Linda. Okay. What, what I would say first is that if you know your son or, or daughter or your children, you know what things interest them. When you see a drastic change in behavior, things that they normally enjoy, they're not doing. Also, if you have signs, for example, opiates can give you nausea, vomiting, constricted pupils, those kinds of signs. Anytime you're worried about it, go see a doctor. Also on the uh, Facebook Live moments ago, we got this question. What are teens using and why has there been an increase? In overdoses because of it. 
Yeah, that's really the scary. So I think what teens are using most is heroin, but they also use the synthetic stuff. You know, they're, they're using oxycodone, and many of you know about that, as well as fentanyl. I, I can't really tell you why all of a sudden there's this huge number of overdoses. All I can think about is that they're taking things like heroin and fentanyl, mixing it together, making it much more lethal. But the bottom line is that we have got to know our kids and talk to oh, them. Yeah be aware of who their friends are and their behaviors. If you don't know your kids, you, you don't look for signs and you don't know when things are changing and you've got to mm -hmm. get, you know, intervene early to make a difference. That's how you get them to stop. Intervene early. That's get exactly in there. right. Okay, we're out of time, but thank you so much, oh, Dr. Andy, and to all who participated on Facebook. If you have a question or a health concern for the good doctor, you can email him at drnandy at wxyz.com or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter and we'll get it right to him.